And we're on. I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And you're listening to Nerd Talk. It is a lovely Tuesday, the 1st of November. What are you pointing at? I'm judging the people viewing us in the future. I know you're not wearing pants. <laughs> but what? no rules makes no... Never mind. So yeah, it's Tuesday. It's November... 1st. Sweet new month. <laughs> new month, new Nerd Talks. Level up! Survived another month. Actually survived Halloween. So happy late Halloween listeners. Happy further from Halloween listeners in the future. Those of you who might be tuning in through iTunes or through our video channel. Tonight on the show we have The Sims Pets. Continuing our trend of reviewing the Sims every 3 Sims plus expansion. Pets. Also news, we actually have some of that this week. Kind of cool. Oh, do we have anything else? We have live appearances we'll be making. Oh yeah, and this is the last week before To Kill a DJ. That is true. Um, one week from today, uh, we'll be doing a six-hour marathon broadcast while fundraising for Advocate Hope Children's Hospital Family Assistance Fund. Um, yes, the name's a mouthful. We're actually to trying to help sick children. I know, right? How bizarre. We do, the, uh, we do this thing twice a year. This is my third year at this, I think. Yep. Yeah. And hey, this time we're not on at stupid o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'll be on from noon to six. Thank you to all of our sponsors who made that possible. Yes, because we actually have things to contribute to the fun this year, they let us pick decent times for the, our uh, our show. Um, so I'd like to take a moment to thank Leisure Hour Hobbies in Joliet, Illinois, um, Graham Cracker Comics in Plainfield, Illinois, uh, Awesome, awesome Sauce, Sauce Sprites, Sprites, who contributed those really cool Pokemon uh, sprites. Which you can totally bid on um, on our website at nerdtalkshow.com slash donate. And hey, going up hopefully tonight will be the uh, the Malifaux auction. That you mentioned like a week ago, maybe two. Yep, that should be available all this next week. And I've, I've got the bases in hand. I can base the models now. I just have to know what box people want. I'm not psychic, and future me is kind of a jerk and would, wouldn't tell me if I asked. Anyway. Anyway. So, yeah. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Yep. So bid on it. Help sick children. Get loot. Also, um, the, our friends at the Galloping Ghost Arcade, Doc Mac was generous enough to donate. Uh, actually, I have them right here. Mm-hmm. Three passes for Three day, day passes entry. For the Galloping Ghost Arcade, which is, I think, the largest... Uh, video game arcade in the state of Illinois. And it's looks like it's trippy. becoming larger. They, uh, they're they going to be expanding. And so we'll be drawing three separate ticket winners. So Sweet. I suppose in theory if somebody were to buy three tickets and win... All three of them. Yeah, that's, that's possible. But um, we'll be picking three different tickets out for winning these things. And, and contacting uh, the uh, the winners. Yes. Um, Welcome, HG. You should, get in. you should get in while the odds are still good. So, yeah. As, Continuing um, along we'll with be We'll be drawing that raffle on the Tequila DJ show. Yeah, we're still trying to figure out what we're doing for that. The tickets are going to be... The tickets are on sale. Uh, they're $3 each or 2 for $4. And so if you want to message me or email me, pixie at nerdtalkshow.com, um, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, like deal with you through PayPal or something to, to get you in on this. Uh, welcome, Echo. So, I think we should announce the uh, the thing that we discussed when we were on our way back from the ghost on uh, Saturday night. You expect me to remember that? <laughs> no, it was kind of late. But uh, basically the idea that if we can get 200 likes on Facebook, we will do a special. That's right. Tonight, a very special nerd talk. No. No? <laughs> so basically, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a poll that you guys can vote on when we start getting close. And we're still a ways off. We, we haven't quite hit 150 yet. So if we hit 200... If we hit 200, there's going to be a poll up. And you guys will vote what game we have to do a massive Let's Play session for. Possibly finishing the game, depending on what it is. There are some that we're just not going to be able to do that. Our sanities won't hold that well, long. Well, we could just do, like, an hour every week. We could make it a serial. Until thing. it's done. Yeah. 
That could get painful for some games. Like, I'm picturing a lot of trauma coming from doing this if we... Well, it's just like somebody goes to Skyrim or something. Not yeah. happening, no. This <laughs> is why we're doing a poll, because we get to pick what things go on the poll. And yes, and d- Echo DNF is going to be on that list. I hate you, son. I hate <laughs> you deeply. <laughs> uh, so right now All we're, of my hate. we're thinking like DNF, uh, Gears 3 should be on that list. Uh... A bunch of games that are coming out. I think, isn't Modern Warfare or whatever But Pyro, out? I can beat Tetris in 45 minutes. That That's not hard. Yeah, there, Modern Warfare 3 is coming out, and you, that could be added to the list. We will take suggestions for this. And just, for, the, for future reference, Cosmic Wiener Dog, I know you're going to listen to this. We are not going to do a full playthrough session of... Chef Boyardee's Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. I'm working my way through it. We do need to... Maybe we can review that for Tequila DJ. That could be on there. That could be on there. If I've got time to play it in the next week, I'm kind of going to an event this weekend. Well, yes. So if you happen to be listening to this and are also in the state of Missouri or somewhere near there, you could actually catch up with us at, uh, well, me anyway, at War Machine Weekend in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, I will be there the 4th through the 6th. Uh, playing War Machine, Malifaux, drinking probably. That's a thing. Yeah, no, Modern Warfare 3 is going to be out by the time we hit. No, it is coming out on that day. Yeah, so if we manage to hit a hundred or 200 Facebook fans, somehow 52 people are like, yeah, we love this, we will actually totally... Um, We'll, we'll play whatever you guys are suggesting. And no, as, as Echo was questioning, we are not running out of material because these games just keep coming out. Yep. We are hitting the holiday rush. Right. Mostly it's just have no time to play anything. I, I did actually get to finish Batman, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but I'm really glad I finished that game. I do thoroughly plan so you were, to... You were all, like, you were whining so much about, our review is making me play this too fast. Yeah, because I want to go back and, like, actually roam the city and find everything before Except getting to the end of the game. Except you can do that, like, after the game is over. I wanted to do it during the game, where there was some, like, sense of urgency. Well, the problem is there was a sense of urgency. Although it's I, prioritized although I suppose things. the Riddler is still killing people, so I yeah. should get on that. Yep. So, uh, yeah... I I will say one thing about the ending. Mark Hamill singing Only You in the Joker voice is the creepiest thing I've ever heard. Wow. Good. That was terrifying. In a distinctly homoerotic way. Homoerotically terrifying. That... Basically, his whole character was like, ho yay all the way, and I I deeply enjoyed that. Mm Mm-hmm. I thought it was hysterical. Yep. I, I enjoy Mark Hamill, like, thoroughly. His his Joker is my favorite, ever. That's Star it. Wars, not so much, give or take. Joker, oh yeah. Mark Hamill's Joker, total fan. That and Wing Commander. Where he tells Batman to get his hot ass over to the theater. Yep. <laughs> no, tight ass. Tight that ass. was it. That, 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 was, that was the clearly much more disturbing implication. That mm-hmm. had to have been it. So, yeah, I guess we should move on to our actual review. Oh, are we going to do the taking pictures every hour thing again? We're probably I don't think not we're gonna be likely like to be breaking into, down this time. Yeah, descending but into we could. madness. I don't know. We've actually got guests this time, so we'll have pictures of more than just the two of us. Yeah, last year was kind of crazy. Crazy, stupid, or really? Although some some people were watching us eat Lunchables at like 5 in the morning, and I'm like, you have nothing better to do with your life. Welcome laser sounds. Hello to Pew Pew. Pew. There's three of them. Oh, well, I missed one. I'm, I'm looking at it from your monitor. Always right? good to have listeners, so... Yay! Welcome live, people. Feel free to chat, chat amongst yourselves. We may occasionally look in. So yeah, um, The Sims 3 Pets. Uh, I picked up The Sims 3 Plus Pets. There is a distinction that he's refusing to make. Um, the so decision was the limited edition. So you got another copy of the regular game. Yes, this comes with the base game in addition to the expansion pack. Okay, so you now have an extra copy of the basic Sims. Was there a price difference between the two? 
Um, the thing is, this was the limited edition. Okay, so it came with extra stuff besides right, so I got, a free copy like, of the original downloads. games. There was like a pet store you could download. <laughs> See, Pyro's making a distinction for you. And, um, I, was, I had to look there for a second. I'm like, what are you talking about? Whatever. Uh, so there's there's some extra downloadable content. Um, there's also the, the, the PC version gets the extra add-in. They get horses. So that is not a That's what you get find. for playing the real version of the game. Yep. So the, you won't get that for playing the console versions. Do people actually play those? I guess. I mean, chat box, like, let me know. Does anyone actually play the Sims on console? I thought it was like specifically... They have to, or they wouldn't make them. That's people a good point. This them. is EA. If EA was like, we lost a dollar, there wouldn't be a sequel. Mm-hmm. All right. I suppose you have a point there. And so, so when did this thing come out? Uh, October 18th, the same day Batman Arkham City came out. There's so much punching of dudes in The Sims. Your Sims are jerks. Why Sims are not jerks? Some of them are. They're, they're, they're just different. Special, if you will. Each one is a special little snowflake. Until you lock them in a room without doors or toilets. I haven't done that in years! At which point they're melted snowflakes. Again, I would like to posit that I haven't done that in years. It's a shame you can't adjust the air conditioning in The Sims, because I'd like to see some of them freeze. Well, I mean, you could back in, like, Sims 2 seasons. You could actually freeze people on that one? Sweet. Corpsicles. Then you had a blue ghost. Remember, there were different <laughs> colored ghosts Come on, depending Echo. on how they died. Pixie already does the Logan's Run thing. You've become too old. You are of no use to me. Be gone. I'm surprised you haven't created, like, a Sims retirement home yet. Stop. You hit senior. You're getting deported to that house. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, the the obvious feature added is that there are there pets There are pets, now. yeah. So uh, that other feature, than fish. <laughs> that feature that was in The Sims 2 that you already bought, yeah, EA just sold you that again. Um... So yeah, dogs, cats, and for PC, which is the version I'm reviewing, uh, horses are the big game changers. Um, th- they actually live different periods of time, depending on species. So the normal setting, a dog will spend 8 days as a puppy, 25 days as an adult, and 14 days as a senior, which I am bad which, at Which, compared math. to a sim's lifespan, is actually pretty long-lived. I'm bad at math, so I'm like your 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 young adult Sims are only going to be young adults for 21 days, so your dog is an adult for as long. 47 days is how long they live cumulatively. It's pretty long in the lifespan of a Sim, considering they're what children for six days in the normal mode. I think like seven, but yeah, like those are some long-lived pets. Uh. A cat will live seven days as a kitten, twenty-eight days as an as a grown cat, and seventeen days as an old cat for a cumulative fifty-two days. So the cats live longer. So, in other words, thirty-five days before Veronica retires the cat. Oh. Anyway, and the Ooh. horses live ridiculously long. They spend fourteen days as foals, thirty-five days as adult horses, and then 17 days as elder senior horses. Or 49 days until it's time for the glue factory. That's low. That's That was bad, and you should feel bad. I've said worse. But not today. In addition to the... So 66 days, cumulatively, on the normal setting. Of course, you can adjust the settings yeah, of the game of so that they can live longer. Need. Um... The, the animals also don't die of anything except old age. You can't accidentally kill your pet. No. And I suppose if, that's good. And if you start neglecting them too much, like, the social worker comes and takes them away anyway, so... Just like a baby. Completely invincible. Man, why don't I just decorate my Sims kitchens with babies? They would never burn down. Like, line everything with baby. Because... the there, there are a lot of things wrong with that statement from just within the me- mechanics of the game. Mm-hmm. Starting with the fact that you can't tile those. <laughs> wow. 
We're we are just <laughs> flinging puns in chat. Um, uh, we also get a new town with pets. Uh, Appaloosa Plains, which is mostly farms, because as I found out rather quickly, horses are really freaking high maintenance. And adding them to like what what was the one that got added in late night? Oh, it was. Gosh, I don't remember. Hang on, I'm Ad- gonna find this. Adding them to the upper class, trendy city that you got in late night isn't necessarily like going to work out. Bridgeport. Yeah. Bridgeport is a city that came with late night. I knew it started with a B. See, um, Echo's thinking this is a good idea. Baby lined kitchen. It will never burn down because they're invincible. Anyway, this is why we can't get sponsors. We could make bumpers out of them. This is why we can't have nice things. I have lots of nice things. I, I'm i going to stop right there. <laughs> so here's the obvious question that I'm sure Pew 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 wants to know. Can you pick the horse's colors? Oh, I mean, you when you go to if you you can go to the equestrian center and pick one out, and they like rotate their I guess stock on a regular basis. You can't do like you go a, to the pony store. You can't do like a design a horse. Yes, if you're creating it with the family. Can you do odd colors? I think you see where I'm going with this. You're you're going My Little Pony with this, and you know I haven't tried it, but. I'm I sure, assume the answer is yes because I'm sure someone is currently there is making, a color wheel that you use for determining um sim like Cuban sims like hair colors and whatnot so I I don't see why that couldn't be used on the animals for so what we need particularly since I remember being able to do it in the Sims two like create a pet screen mm-hmm. so we, I had I had like a, a I was like. I think I was, like, 14 and thought it was hysterical to have, like, a bright pink dog with, like, star-shaped patches on it. Now the French figured that out long ago. <laughs> with the star-shaped spots? hmm Yeah. Yeah, they did They did that. Um, yeah, so what we need is a mod that lets you create a, a lot of horses without humans and then gives the horses more human-like options. So that would be a really hard mod. I don't think it would. I just think it's adding permissions to the animal. Hello, Q. I look forward to having my reality restructured. There. Anyway! See, went Star Trek that time, just for you. Thinking for you. Anyway. Anyway. So, I, I, there, there, there are some pros and cons between this version and the last one. Um, the, the, the most noticeable plus on this was that Okay, um, much like how they've expanded Sims person, human Sims personalities, with this one they've expanded the personalities of the pets. They're, they're definitely a lot more unique. Um, back in Sims 2, you could pick from, like, there were three different, like, trait settings that you could go to either extreme on. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, like, sloppy or finicky, and genius or stupid, or energetic or lazy. That was basically all you had. Yep. You have three different traits to pick from, and it is a huge list. Um, you can get up to three um, as just innate traits. Yeah, though, that's a lot of traits for the animals. Um, and they all have a different effect on the animal's personality, just like it does for the behaviors mobile that they will do. Um, however, the, the there's another thing that's added. It's 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 this is the basically the only way you could exercise control over them in The Sims 2 pets, because the pets were not able to... They were like babies. You couldn't directly control them at all. And so the only way you could um, regulate your pet's behavior was through praise or punishment, or praise or scolding, rather, um, to try and encourage or discourage certain behaviors. Um, you can do that in The Sims 3... Um, to encourage certain behaviors, and it will give them a new trait if you do it often enough. Uh, I encouraged one cat specifically for, uh, you know, you you would praise it or it would do this thing often enough, and it it gained the playful trait. Or you can discourage your pet from, say you've got like a destructive pet, and... uh, you discur- you like scold it enough for doing that. You discourage it from doing that, and that trait will go away. Mm-hmm. 
It will no longer be in, like set in there. And so, in that way, they can have multiple trait, more than three traits, on the pet. It's just some of them are going to be learned behaviors. Okay. Um, there are a lot of traits. Some of them are obviously um, exclusive to a certain species of pet. Yeah, you're not going to get loyalty out of a cat. Just saying. No, no, that's the um, the, the things like um, where it is agile. That's a horse specific trait. Cats naturally have that agile thing down. Okay, so there's adventurous. Uh, adventurous pets are quite curious, want to explore everything. Uh, again, I had a cat in the game that had that trait, and it would it would amuse itself by exploring underneath certain furniture. All right. Yeah. Uh, aggressive. Pets are not usually aggressive by nature, but merely have a bad attitude when they interact with other pets. A bad attitude that often leads to fights. So, obviously, these pets won't get along well with other sims or other animals and will frequently, you know, react hostile in a hostile manner. Um, Clueless. Uh, Let's see. Unsuspecting animals frequently forget what they've just done and are easily distracted. They're not quick to develop skills and characteristics, but are ideal for absent-minded sims. Basically because that's the same trait as absent-minded in human sims. Your pet's absent-minded... And so are you, so you'll get along great. Let's see, what one is a little particularly Skittish. interesting? I'm afraid of the destructive pet trait. Because I'm guessing it's like The Sims 2 where the thing just rakes its claws across your furniture and suddenly you have a pile of dust. Yes. Yeah, that's terrible. Or they'll, like, chew on your paper. Or you can take, you can take the non-destructive trait to just prevent that entirely. Yep. Which means that they'll, you know, instinctively go for the scratching post or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you've got the lazy pets. They like to sit around, around things. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, piggy. So they devour their food quickly. Um, Likely to chew from, or drink from the toilet. Yeah. Well then. Chew on your furniture, that type of thing. Uh, agile horses, fast, like to jump. That tends to um, that tends to make them good for the horse specific based competitions. There's like running and like competitions for the horses that you can win, um, that you can compete in. And of, of course, the downside to that is they need frequent exercise or they get you know bored. Uh, let's see, there's friendly pets, so they tend to have better relationships with other sims or other pets or other animals. Um, genius pets, they learn new skills and such more quickly, and then they get tend to get along better with genius sims. Uh, hyper pets, always overactive, never stay in one place. The energy bars on theirs fill up longer, and they take longer to come down. So that's actually got a perk to it there. They need to be asleep less often, and for less amount of time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hunters. I like the hunter idea. Um, we'll get into that more when we talk about the individual pets. So, I think that's a cat-specific one. Yeah. So the pets with hunting instincts are uh, better at spotting and catching prey. Um, loud pets. So, they're vocal. <laughs> and apparently tend to gravitate towards sims who play music. Mm-hmm. Uh, nervous. That's a horse-specific trait. Um, but they tend to get on well with neurotic sims. So they try to pair animals with similar traits for their owners. Um, let's see. Neat pets like having baths. Yep, same as the basic sim traits. Neat, quiet, gentle. Uh, shy, that's a normal sim trait. Let's see. Uh, fast horses, again, that'll that'll make them better in competitions. Because uh, you can actually do that with your horses. Take them to the spring races. Spring foal, which means they don't like jumping, and that means that that horse will be bad at tournaments and races. Um, proud pets. Um, means that they're basically finicky. They, they dislike poor hygienic conditions in their environment. So, basic cat trait? Uh, stubborn. That's a horse trait. Um, they tend to share an affinity with evil sims, but otherwise don't get along with people. 
Uh, brave horses. I'm uh, just seeing chemistry to make, like, the worst pet imaginable. But so, you can do that with your Sims, too, I suppose. So a brave horse won't freak out with uh, over sprinkler systems going off, fire alarms, burglar alarms, and other disruptive things. Because I know from personal experience that when a horse freaks out, usually that means you're going to get hurt. <laughs> All right, then. Yeah. Poor B. Threw me off. <laughs> Let's see. Untamed. Let's see. Um, Don't want to wear saddles, huh? So that's a dog-specific trait, loyalty. Uh, so they get a positive buff from spending time with their sims, and they learn skills more quickly than other dogs. Uh, independent pets, um, they like being... They, they tend to have more fun by themselves. Uh, let's see, the untamed horses will not want sims riding on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, playful pets like playing. It's kind of self-explanatory. Uh... Hydrophobic. Uh, this looks like a dog-specific trait. Uh, water-shy dogs have a natural aversion to anything that has to do with water, and in the water they are definitely not happy, so you probably won't, you know, have fun trying to give them a bath. Um, and then there's the destructive uh, trait that, you know, causes them to want to dig up your yard and wreck your furniture or whatever. Alright, so we also have four additional traits that are designed specifically for Sims. Uh, cat, dog, basically it's just the animal lover who enjoys every animal, and then specific ones for cats, dogs, and horses. So the cat person, the dog person, and the equestrian. Yep. So, basic traits to add to the game. Um, overall, I don't know. There's, what do you, what do you think? Other, Does this there's seem some other things, um, like fleas, if your pet spends a lot of time outdoors, you might have fleas, which your sims can then catch. You will then have to bathe them. And try and get rid of it. Yeah, doesn't sound like fun. Um, horses, like I said, are incredibly high maintenance. They need lots of space. Um, so more maintenance than an actual full sim? I don't know that I would go that far, but they certainly require a lot more space. You need to have a big lot in order to have a horse. Basically, you need a ranch for them. Um... You're because not going they, to need just... to have, they need to have, like, a little stall to, like, sleep in and whatnot. Yeah. They need to have, like, running hay, room, water trough. Um, there are some other things that are nice to have, like balls or a salt lick or whatever. Um, but but those are necessities, and they take up lots of space. Righto. Even the smallest one will fill up, like... So this isn't just, like, add a room to my house, and that will be enough to handle the... Or, horse. like, with cats and dogs, where you can just kind of, like, put their stuff in amongst your other sim- your sims' other belongings. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the city that you get in you, addition to pets... There's a whole bunch of other um, items that that come with this, obviously, to manage... Yeah, there, there's whole categories just for the animal stuff. So if stuff. you just go to the buy menu and you can sort it by function, there's a pet essentials menu, and there are different tabs for cats, dogs, horses, miscellaneous, and then all of them... Um, if we just look at... Yeah, your one sim here that owns a cat found a great use for the horse's saddle option, didn't she? So if we look at... I'm trying to just find... Just passing that one, huh? Let's see. You can use your um, horse as a mes- method of transportation if you, you know, want to ride it. But yeah, see, that's, that's wow. the smallest that stall I can find. Wow, that does take up a lot of room. That so that's easily, as much space as a small house. That's that's a, the size of a garage, I'd say. It, mm-hmm. it requires about as much space, if not more, than a car, and that's just for the stall for them to sleep in. Yep. Yeah, plus, you need like running courses. Well, you don't need them if you plan on competing. That's another thing entirely. But then you can just go. You can just go to the public lot for the equestrian center. I love the idea of my doctor sim taking a horse to work. I like the idea that you can have a buy a pet rock. It, it doesn't do anything, but some Sims would want the pet rock. Um, there's there's also like small pets that like have less of an effect. There's, you can get an ant farm, fish you tank. Know. Um, the fish cage. have always been there. Uh, birds, lizard terrarium, rodent terrarium, snakes, turtles. 
I hear those are high maintenance. Um, yeah. Birds can be kind of expensive, depending on which kind you buy. All right. Uh, with the main with the main pets, you can teach them different things. Um, cats and dogs both have a different hunting ability that they can learn. Your sim is just obsessed with tormenting her cat. <laughs> she's not tormenting it; she's just watching it play. Yeah, but the cat still really dislikes her, doesn't it? That, that, that I decided to open up one of the default houses that already had a cat, in order to just be able to jump right in for the purpose of this review. And it turned out that the oh, they're, they're, they're now familiar. It's it's an acquaintance, but I opened it up and the the, the game like the, the the game basically presented the scenario that this cat actively dislikes its owner. And the first like want that popped up on the cat was to become friends with someone else. <laughs> uh, anyway, so there's the 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 cats and dogs each have a different hunting skill. Cats can be taught to go catch prey, basically go look for other critters. If they get high enough skill points, they can be taught to fetch a specific animal, which they still might not get right, but, you know. It's the Sims. There's always that risk of chaos. Uh, and so, yeah, th- th- that way you could end up, you know, your cat goes, fetches you like a turtle or something. I've got a pet turtle now. Can you just feed the turtle to the pet? I don't think so. Save yourself having to go get You could probably food. sell it, though. Yay, sale. Um, now, here's a question. Your Dr. Sim has ridden his horse to work. Does the horse do the car thing and, like, go into the inventory for the day, then? Uh, there are hitching posts around town ah. that you can basically park your horse at. Convenient. We will add the hitching posts outside of the hospital. Why am I picturing a Wild West-themed town now? Um, there are some around Appaloosa Plains, because obviously this town was designed with them with in pets mind. Pets in mind, yeah. And so you'll find them randomly about... Let's see if I can spot one. Okay, this town is way too obsessed with its pets. The public park has a bone-shaped fountain in the middle of it. That, that is the dog park, specifically. A little bit obsessed. That, that's the dog park. And there's a wild horse in it! Yeah, that that's one of the other weird things that we noticed when we started playing this expansion. There's another wild horse! That there will just be wild horses standing around well, because this Because you town. know how there's stray dogs and stray cats, apparently there's stray horses too. That seems that like you kind of a big public and safety then adopt. concern. <laughs> Whatever. Hello and welcome to Pokemans. Now... Have we actually ever had in The Sims a hobo get added? A stray human that I can befriend no. and take home? I think those are called the NPCs. <laughs> yeah, but they always give them homes. I yes. want a stray human. What, so you can feel bad for it? What? I don't understand. Anyway, so... Um... Cats can be taught to go fetch animals. Dogs can be taught a hunting skill, but it involves um, Fido go run and fetch me loot, basically. It can be taught to go, like, dig for gems or whatever collectibles. It can be a criminal mastermind with the dog. Um, Also, if you level up your dog's hunting skill, you can give it the command to fetch you a date. Really? If If there is another sim of your sim's preferred gender on the lot then you can give it that command and it will go bring that person to your sim as a way to, like, hook them up. Wow. You can use your dog as date bait. Yep. Wow. Wow, we ate In a very literal way. You're really thinking ahead here. (laughs) And, um... Thinking she should get one for that lifetime goal. (laughs) Yeah, well, some of the pre-made sims are, like... Out there this time. Yeah, EA, I don't think they, they have realize like, this is a T-rated game. They, they've given you the crazy cat lady. That was one of your pre-made options. <laughs> they've given you the... Lonely, bachelor with a dog. The, the lonely bachelorette with a cat. Who has other animal-themed accessories around her bedroom. I'm sure there's a riding crop joke in there somewhere. <sighs> Whatever, not judging. 
But, like, you picked that character just like, oh, good, she's only got one cat. It seems like this will be manageable. Not reading the text that said, this character distinctly has a wild side waiting to be unleashed. <laughs> yeah, she's saddle... kind of got this lifetime want to be the girlfriend of ten other Sims. And a saddle in the bedroom, and she don't own a horse. <laughs> It's like, wow, EA. I don't know how to respond right, I understand that. the Sims audience is getting more mature as the years go on, but whoa. There are mods for this. Also, like, her bedroom lights turn, like, red. Her bedroom lights turn red and she has leopard print sheets. Yeah. It's very Why, odd. What an interesting Sim you've got. I didn't even make it that way, too. Oh, she's also got a lower back tattoo. Infer from that what you will. Indeed. Um, so basically, in order to keep a horse, though, you need a huge lot. Um, so, so, you're yeah, say, the, so you're saying poor Sims probably won't own a horse. No, poor people probably won't own a horse, remember? <laughs> so it's kind of true to life in that sense. Um, there's, well, let's see. So I've gone over the cat's hunting skill. I've gone over the, do- the dog's hunting skill a bit. Talk so about these horse competitions. So what do those entail? Um, running, jumping, basically it, racing. It's just an organized competition where they, they, they run it for you, right? It's not you actively controlling the. Oh, well, they, they, horse. they. You need to like have your skill up. Like the sim needs to have a good riding skill, and the horse needs to have good skills at those yeah. things. But but they'll run themselves once you're there. It's 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 basically like you know click go to gym workout type of thing. Yeah. Um, so if, you know, your horse trains in jumping and racing, um, they'll have competitions available, um, kind of like opportunities, I guess. I was gonna make a analogy there, and, you know, if they do well, the horse and the rider, you know, get a relationship boost, um, and it gets you a little bit of money, too. And you can also have, like, a just-for-fun competition with, like, friends and family as, like, a social outing with if your horses. Your friends and family happen to be rich enough to all have horses. Yes. Right. And, you know, you if you do well, you get, like, little trophies. And... Alright. So, do we have any other, like, main special features that we want to go over? Uh, there's animal breeding. Yep. Obviously for, you know, the purpose of getting those traits that you like, particularly with the horses. They've emphasized this because you want to be able to breed those traits that make them good for those competitions. Mm -hmm. So that's like the peak of the horse life of this game. Horses need a lot of care. It's even in the tutorial bit. Yep. And yep. Social Worker, for some reason, also operates as the Humane Society in The Sims. Man, hate that Social Worker. There's, um... No, 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 important role. Also, look at how tiny the puppies and kittens are. It's preposterous. I'm really glad Sims don't have, like, something for accidentally stepping on one. Because <laughs> those are some tiny animals. So, yeah. Baby animals, um, foals stay babies the longest. With, like, normal setting at, like, two weeks. Mm-hmm. Even then, they're pretty big, but... Um, yeah, they're kind of helpless. So I remember you were having trouble when you first got this as to, uh... How to acquire these animals. It basically... I don't know if this is supposed to be EA, like, subliminally being all, like, puppy mills are bad or something, but I can't seem to figure out a way to go to a store and, like... Acquire buy a these. buy an animal and like be able to like customize it the way I used to in The Sims Two pets. Yeah, no, um, it looks instead like instead you have to adopt one. Mm-hmm. And otherwise, you have to make the pet when you when you make the make family. Your Sims. So unless you want to yank out the whole family, go back, edit them, put them back in the house. Can't you just create a family of one cat and then add it to the household? I don't know that you. Can because that's typically the way I added Sims to to houses, and they they wouldn't be a part of the official family. But uh, but you could just create them as a one set and then add them in. Let's see, I'm not sure if you can create them without a human to go with them. I don't know. We'll make a house of all cats. 
will smell terrible. <laughs> Wait, I forgot the profit part of this. Yep, nope, it's gone. No, that that doesn't sound like a good idea. So yeah, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of features here. I gotta say though. There is a major downside, and you wouldn't think it, but it's that you can directly control the animals now. Once the, once the, the animal is a part of your household, like, just the cat, I can just directly command the cat to do things. And Unlike being intense, real cats. And intensely micromanaging, as I do in The Sims, kind of takes out the challenge. See, before, in The Sims 2 Pets, there was another intelligence involved that you were basically trying to either reason or fight with for control. Mm -hmm. Like a real pet. And that added something to the game. That made it, uh, like I said, a little bit more of a challenge. It also... Uh, a little more realistic. Yes. That you don't get to control. And it adds something for, for like a story factor if you want to try and think of The Sims in in a narrative sense. Mm-hmm. Like this, this is this is the this is you know the story yeah. of their lives, as it were. In, in this um, one, if you really wanted to make your sim and cat get along, you could force them to. Basically, because I could just force them to interact, mm -hmm. in, with only positive interactions. Um, and I mean, it's it's you lose the humor of oh look at that silly cat sitting on the counter. If I told it to jump on the counter, yep, or. Oh no, the cat is wrecking the furniture when I could just I, I, I could click just click on him and say no, go no, sit over it, here. It's, I, I, I could not just do that. I, I, I could never give it the command to do it to begin with. And why would you? Mm -hmm. uh, I could it's, it's We, we just did make your cat go roam around town by itself for a while. Yep. And then play with a raccoon. <laughs> Don't let your cat play with a raccoon. <laughs> Nothing good comes when cats and raccoons play together. It might be okay on The Sims, but in real life, not fun times. So yeah, um, alright, then I guess we can go to our final category. Do you recommend this? Is it fun? Do you think it added enough to your Sims game to be worth the $35 price tag? I'm certainly enjoying it. I certainly missed having the animals around, and yes, they're cute, and so I, I guess the thing that would clear up your previous complaint is just don't select your pet. Let it run off of its AI. Yeah, it's 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 hard in an exercise. Basically, just the turn on free will. Don't give it any commands of that variety. Mm -hmm. Just let its behave. Just let its traits dictate its behavior. Yep. It's very hard not to make yourself do that, though. Yeah. Especially since you you want to be you want to select your pet so that you can look at its motives. And be like, is it hungry or whatever? Yeah, I found the Sims are pretty good at taking care of themselves as far as those motives go. Although my Sims keep collapsing because they never seem to make it to the bed. It's so like, maybe they're I'm, not very good at that. I'm monstrously tired. I should go to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you saw this one. I'm monstrously tired. I think I'll watch my cat play with this ball for an hour. <laughs> no, that's realistic. <laughs> I need to go to bed. Oh, cute kitty. <laughs> So like, you you've that, done that honestly? one. You've done that. I don't have cats. Well, you had pets. My pets would go to bed with me. That's no. not really a well, thing. You, you had better trained pets, obviously. But no, typically my response to my actual pet is, I'm trying to go to bed. Why do I hear the cat eating my stuff? <laughs> Last night she was eating my shoe. I didn't know cats did that. She was chewing your shoe like a puppy. Yeah, my cat's retarded. <laughs> probably inbred. Probably also inbred. <laughs> Saying, I probably Wait. have an inbred retarded cat. <laughs> the two things aren't related, but she's got them both. I... Yeah, I don't even know how we got on that tangent. Just talking about real animals. Um, I will say the animations are adorable for all yes. of the pets. They're very realistic. Uh, They're very the well first done. time I saw like the the first time I saw a foal wander onto the lot, I was like, "Baby horsey must have." Yeah, she also saw her cat the first time and was like, "Oh, kitty." <laughs> so you've at least got that going. Um, so you recommend this for for Sims Three fans? 
Ad- admitted, the real fans already bought it. I was going to say, if they were if they were already fans, they bought it. Anybody on the fence? I'd say give it a shot. It's it's it if if nothing else for all the other stuff it adds. Yep. Because with that, you also get um new new um new lots, new sim traits. Um, new lifetime wishes and rewards. The, the the cat the the animals also have their own like wishes and whatever, which grant them lifetime rewards points, which you can use on lifetime rewards. The cheapest one I remember being the ability gaining the ability to vomit at will. Powerful trait for a cat. <laughs> I, I did love the description for that. It's like want to unleash revenge on your master. Nothing beats the ability to vomit at will. <laughs> Show your uh, unruly master who's boss by spraying all over him. <laughs> it's like, wow, that is that is vengeful syntax right there. Yeah, the flavor text is usually pretty good with these. Uh, let's see, you get new interactions between between Sims and the, and also with the animals. There's new items. There's new venues. Um, new skills. New NPCs. There's the contests. There's the collectibles. Um, if you're not, like, even into all the, like, major pets, you could just get, like, little chip, like, oh, I shouldn't say chipmunk, but, like, gerbil or something. I don't know what else can go in. Chinchillas. Chinchillas are rodents. Sweet. Unfortunately, they're not dire chinchillas. They apparently abandoned that with, uh, the medieval sims. Also, dire chinchillas tend to, like, eat people's armor and stuff, and so I don't think they'd be good for a suburban setting. I guess. Um, overall, you rate this as one of the the must-have expansions? I, I put it as pretty high up there. I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't put it as my top one, but maybe within like the top two or top three. Fair enough. Well, I guess we can move on to news for the week then. So you didn't uh, want to while we were still on the topic of Sims. I, I think we're running short on time. All right. Fair enough. We'll do a mini feature. It'll be a To Kill a DJ thing. Okay. See, we're adding content to other shows. Not running short. In fact, we're running full. We're running tall. I don't know. Moving on, so this week uh, we've had the final reveal of the two last characters who will be coming to Marvel vs. Capcom 3 when it goes ultimate in two weeks. That would be the the launch trailer for both Rocket Raccoon, <laughs> launch. The, the Marvel character that no one actually remembered existed, and Frank West, the character everyone was like, why is this here? Because now we've got... We now have four zombie hunters in this game. We've, we've got Chris uh, Redfield, Jill Valentine, Arthur from Ghouls and Ghosts, and now Frank West. Man, Capcom hates zombies. I think it's okay to hate zombies. Fair enough. They're, lo- they're, they're low-hanging fruit, very easy target. They're, they're right up there underneath Nazis. There, there's actually a really good extra credit special on why zombies are great enemies. That was their their Halloween episode. Mm-hmm. Totally worth watching. Haven't seen it yet. Well worth it. I should do so, that. So, clearly. Rocket Raccoon is like what you get when you take a grizzled, uh, grizzled World War II veteran, like the, the stereotype commando, mm-hmm. and to put him in a raccoon's body. <laughs> like, he, he's literally two feet tall. And, like, wield bazookas and traps and um, chain guns. And one of his ultimates, he calls him a napalm strike on your opponent's head after burying them in the ground. It It's really crazy. Uh, yes, as Echo's pointing out in chat, he has a British accent. This character is insane. He's, like, one of the fastest moving characters in the game and flies at all kinds of random directions. I, I see a definite tournament character there. He, he's nuts. And on the other side of things, Frank West is kind of a gimmick character. Uh, his big thing that he does is he attacks with multiple weapons, just like you would in the game. And he'll change those weapons that he's attacking with based on his photography. So during the match, he'll take pictures of the enemy, and when you land a successful hit with the camera, it'll say level up. As you level up, you'll start wielding bigger and bigger weapons, until eventually he's, like, wielding the ace weapons of the Dead Rising series, like two chainsaws tied together to a boat oar. His, uh, his first super is he charges you with the shopping cart, 
it, which literally has zombies and knives taped to it. Very awesome move. Well, he, he's another Capcom joke character, but this one I could actually see as having a, a better uh, chance of tournament play than, like, say, Phoenix Wright, who is ridiculous, but has a lot of stipulations to be good. Well, I don't know. I, I like the humor involved in Frank West and the lack of humor that's in Rocket Raccoon, which ends up being the funny part, that he is a completely serious character and shouldn't be. But I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to both of these. You would totally take him seriously if that weren't also juxtaposed against the fact that it's a raccoon! It, it is a raccoon with a British accent wearing a space jumpsuit wielding heavy weaponry. I definitely think he's cool. I'm, uh, now that we've seen every single character that will be coming in Ultimate, I'm really looking forward to this. I have no problem throwing down the $40 for this. Alrighty then. Because we now have 12 additional characters. All of them are really cool. Like, even even the joking ones. Like, when the initial announcement came, I didn't get why Firebrand was in there, the gargoyle. He's got potential. He's, he's a harassment character. Um, when they put in Phoenix Wright, I saw him as just purely joke character, but they've actually made his systems work in the game, where you keep the flavor that is Phoenix Wright, but he's still a, a fighting game character. He works in this world. I, I'm, I'm still most looking forward to getting Strider back, who should have been in the previous game. But hey, at least they're making amends on that. Mega Man's not coming, but... Man, I know people who are so mad about that. I'm laughing so hard about that. <laughs> Look, we, we got the better version. We've got Zero. He does the same things, but has a sword. And hair. Also important. Also has hair. Right? I have no problem with Zero being there instead of Mega Man. I think Ghost Rider is going to absolutely dominate the uh, the meta for the game. I think he is going to be, like, the cheap tournament fighter. Mm-hmm. And Phoenix Wright is going to replace Phoenix as the tournament cheap character. Because once you've pulled off the the sheer amount of things that are required to get Phoenix Wright in his ultimate form, mm-hmm. he's just going to kill people. Mm-hmm. Every one of his heavy attacks just produces the giant finger of death. Mm-hmm. Which causes wall bounces and floor bounces. And he's probably going to manage a ceiling bounce, which isn't previously possible. Plus he's got like the super that you can't dodge and can't block where you are judged in the courtroom and explode, and it's pretty much just instant death for one character. It's impressive. The things Phoenix Wright is going to manage if he can pull off all of the stages of his uh, early game are going to be phenomenal. Uh, On the other side of my competitive gaming, we've also had new announcements for League of Legends, because Riot is actually a game company that's on top of things with their game. I think they've actually realized they only get people's money when they're making new stuff. So as long as they keep making new stuff, which they they seem to be at the point of they can make two characters a month, it seems, is what they're doing. Or maybe a little more than that. Like a new character every three weeks seems to be the thing. Because even since I started this, like, what, two months ago? Ish. There's been four new characters. They just added the fourth one this morning. Uh, Shiny new things! And yeah, uh, I actually didn't spend any money on her because I'd been saving up for another character. Uh, I had been saving up the influence points to pick up Graves, the uh, outlaw with the shotgun that had been added previously, uh, the last Mm -hmm. character that got thrown in. But he's free this week. So you don't have to. So I don't have to. I totally got to uh, play Games of Graves this morning. It was awesome. Mm Mm-hmm. He's exactly his promise. He's a really gruff, true, great kind of guy with a giant shotgun. He just makes things explode. It's amazing to watch. Um, But the new girl that's been added is Shivana. Makes me think of Sylvanas, actually. So the the half-dragon lady, who's actually a part of the, like, righteous empire in the game. And she got added this morning along with two skins for her. Actually, both of which are really, really cool. 
Uh, they also added new skins for Miss Fortune. One where she's actually wearing more clothing. Still not what I'd call fully dressed, but more clothing in her mafia outfit. Mm-hmm. She's almost fully clothed. Almost there. <laughs> Pixie's eyes twitching. Going back. Uh, we've also had the Jurassic Cho'Gath added, which I, I guess I love the banner. So Cho'Gath as a skeleton, because that's cool. And likewise, they've each had their own custom animations. But uh, yeah, I, I really like this... What's it called? The... Uh, where is it? I'm trying to find the name of it. The Iron Scale version of Shivana just looks amazing. She loses the stupid headpiece that she's wearing. Yeah, the hat's kind of silly. Yeah, and just... She's basically in her all-human form and looks fantastic. And mm-hmm. likewise, the dragon actually changes based on what you pick. So, Shivana being a half-dragon, her ultimate is to turn into a full dragon. I see. Which looks really amazing in-game, and it it doesn't do a horrific amount of damage when you do it. It, it increases the amount of damage that she does a little bit, it increases her armor a little bit, mm-hmm. and it, it refines her moves so that they become AoE. It also scares the crap out of your opponents. As watching someone leap and turn into a dragon would. And I found that the intimidation factor of this character is enough like to... Like, just, it, 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 like, scares the players? Yeah, I've been playing against actual human players with this character. I played uh, two full games with her this morning. Actually, three full games with her. One, two, lost one. And whenever I leapt into dragon form, like, her, the move is specifically she flies forward, picking up any champion that she runs into along the way, and then crashes into the ground. So you will pick all of them up. And bring them with you. And, like, I've watched so many people who are in decent levels of health just run away after I did that. Because they didn't know what happened to their character just now. It's like, I moved and then there was a fiery explosion and then there was a dragon. I'm going home. (laughs) Pew's bringing up the point that, yeah, your allies get terrified of that. Because no one's used to this character. She's been in the game for less than a day. But yeah, she... She is their attempt to make a a carry, which is kind of like the center of your team, a melee character. Because traditionally carries are arranged characters because they're they're easier to play. Mm-hmm. It's harder to mess up a, a ranged character. But no, she can actually totally pull off the role because of the turning into a giant dragon. Okay then. Uh, I think this is a really uh, it's a really great sign that Riot has great ideas behind their characters and are pushing this game in cool directions. Despite the fact they really don't have to because it's a free game and they'll be getting money from people collecting the old stuff. Oh, I, I'm i really impressed. I think this is a sign that this is a company that really cares, that really has cool ideas, and that wants your money and wants to earn it. Instead of just putting out, like... Here's a slightly more powerful version of something you've already got. No, this this is a unique character that is actually really cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and hey, mostly clothed. Yep, notice that. Notice that. That's a little low cut, but it's a hard. And of course, it is. But then again, she turns into a dragon. So, yeah, yeah, but she's going to be spending most of the time in that. Not if you play her right. The The point of Shivana seems to be that if you play this character correctly, you will spend equal time in dragon form and in human form. And it's awesome if you can pull it off. Right, then. Because every one of her basic melee attacks will increase her rage bar to the point where she can become uh, the dragon form. And then that bar will slowly tick down while she's a dragon. As long as she's hitting things in melee, that bar will refresh faster, or not go down as quickly. It'll still go down, but it's slower as long as you're hitting things. Yeah, I I think she is an awesome addition. She is fiery death and great intimidation. And she's got a great joke line. What do you get when a dragon sneezes? Out of the way. See? Chuckle there. 
So yeah, I'm totally going to continue my League of Legends playing. I'm having so much fun. I still have yet to play this game. No, year. actually, echo your question. She's still armored in dragon form. The armor just spreads out on the dragon. And when she goes back to her normal size, the armor just shrinks back to what it was. So she is still an armor-plated dragon, which is scary in and of itself. Yep. And so, okay, I, I'm... <laughs> you heard the joke. I, I am, uh... I'm a fan of clothed ladies in my video games. Hey, they're, they're almost there with misfortune. So close. That's fetish wear, and you know it. Yep. It's you like, know it, and don't you pretend it's like, for a it's damn like going second to the ho- otherwise. It's like going to the Halloween store. Yep. Speaking of which, we need to stock up on cheap costumes. And candy. Mostly candy. So, for this fine Tuesday, November 1st... Discount Candy Tuesday. That's what I'm calling it. We were talking about League of Legends, now we're just going random. So... Hi, Kai Kai, sorry you missed the show, basically. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We're actually on an hour earlier. We look forward to you in the future. You should listen to us on iTunes. We don't have a page for that. Just search Nerd Talk on iTunes. You'll get us. Or you could just listen. It'll be automatically posted to the website as soon as I push that button. And there will be video as soon as Pyro finds time to either edit or not edit it. His call, really. Kind of afraid. Well, obviously he's got to trim off, like, the nine minutes of buffer I have at the beginning. Well, at least we know he's not grief-editing us, like, putting, like, a fish head over mine. (laughs) You know, don't give him ideas, because he totally will. Might make for a more interesting video. (laughs) You're totally cool with this, just having a fish head the entire time. I I have no preference. In fact, I'm kind of surprised we aren't doing this wearing masks, apart from the fact that masks would have cost money. Also, you wouldn't have been able to hear you talk. Good point. I'm behind a mask. So yeah, for silly this... Silly hats, though. Hats would work. Silly hats would be fine. We'll do a, a silly hat show later. Um, so this has been Nerd Talk. Um, I'm Sen. I'm Pixie. And we'll see you at noon next week on Nerd Talk. Look forward to it. <laughs>